Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Carl and I will be running today's session called Strategies for Using CK12. We are so happy that you have joined us today. Many of you are already part of our CK12 Certified Educator Program. So to all of you, welcome back. This is the third webinar in our June series. We started with the Flexbook platform, went on to customizing Flexbooks and adaptive practice, and then today is when we put it all together and do teaching strategies. Um, this webinar can absolutely stand alone though. So if you are brand new um, to the Certified Educator Program, if you wanna learn more about the Certified Educator Program, you can visit ck12.org slash certified and press register to get started. Um, just a reminder that our program involves two on-demand sessions that you watch on your own time. Then you join us for three core live webinars complete all of the matching assignments, and then complete a final form to request your certificate. Now, since this session counts as one of those core live sessions, you'd already be a third of the way through that requirement at the end of this hour. Um, like everything on CK12, this program is completely free. There is no cost and you can join at any time. At the end of today's webinar, we can discuss more about the Certified Educator Program for anyone with questions, or you can type questions in the Q&A window for our team to answer privately. Now, let's make sure that you're all comfortable with our Zoom webinar platform. You should be seeing two different windows on your Zoom screen. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. We like to use that Q&A window during the presentation for you to post any questions you have for our team that you would like answered. We'll be typing answers to some of the questions and we'll also be doing some live demos. The chat window is a place for community conversation. So as you all have been doing so far, uh, we'd love for you to introduce yourselves. If you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject that you teach. The trick to the chat window is just making sure that you select to send your messages to all panelists and attendees. So look back at what you sent. And if you send it just to panelists, we at CK12 are the only people who could see that. If you want everybody to see it, say all panelists and attendees. I also wanted to mention that this webinar is being recorded. We will have it on our website within 24 hours. So if you need to go back and revisit any of the strategies, or if you wanna share this with colleagues, you'll be able to do that as soon as tomorrow. We have two resource pages that might be helpful for this session. Um, I think I'm gonna have one of my team members put these in the chat window, these links. They're tinyurls.com. The first one is tinyurl.com slash CK12 strategies 2019. Uh, just a resource page that you can save to your computer, you can download it, you can print it. Just a reminder of some of the things we're gonna to cover today. The second page is also a tiny URL and it talks about our PLIX and our SIMS. So tinyurl.com slash CK12 PLIX SIMS 2019. Again, you don't have to do anything right away if you don't want to, just know that those links are there for you um, for you to reference at a later date. Okay, let's talk about what we're gonna be covering today. With our Flexbook 2.0 platform, you have the tools and resources all in one place to plan and customize, deliver and differentiate, and access and remediate. So with that in mind, we're gonna be covering strategies in each of those areas. For lessons and homework, we'll talk about designing your classes and assignments using CK12 resources as supplemental or core curriculum, ways to customize CK12 to meet your needs, and integrating related content throughout your Flexbooks and lessons. Next, we'll talk about differentiation and support for learning. Um, we'll tell you how to do that at all different levels using CK12 classes and eight components of our offerings and literacy tools. Then we will wrap up with ways to use CK12 to assess learning, monitor progress, and remediate when needed. Our main goal is that by the end of the session, you come away with specific and actionable strategies you can use immediately to engage your students using CK12 resources. Uh, before I pass this off to Carl, we, we are gonna launch a poll that you will see on your screen in just a second. I think there it is, you should be seeing a poll. 
And I believe there are two questions. If you scroll, you'll see the second question. Um, the first question, we just want to know what CK12 resources have you used previously with your students? So there's lots of options. You can select all that apply, any of these resources you've used with your students. Or uh, the last option for any of you who haven't had a chance yet is I have not used CK12 with my students yet. And then the second question asks you how you plan to use CK-12 in the coming months or year. So Carl, why don't I go ahead and bring you on while we're waiting for these results to populate and let you say hello to everybody. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are throughout the world. We're so excited that you're with us here today to kind of get some great strategies for using CK-12. And these are strategies that you'll be able to implement right away for those of you still teaching in the classroom this week, next week, or if you're planning for next year. So we're excited to be with you today and to um, share some great ideas. Okay, we're getting a couple of people saying that they don't see the poll. You should be seeing a poll that just popped up kind of over your Zoom screen. If you're not seeing it, don't worry. It's not, it's not a big deal. We're just trying to survey and, you know, see how you guys are doing with CK12. Um, so hopefully the bulk of you are getting that working. We'll give you just another few minutes or a few seconds here, I guess. I see the poll, but it's not letting you submit. Some, some of the folks are reporting that you can't see the poll. Let's see, why don't we go ahead, Katie, and close out the results on the poll. And we'll see if this worked correctly. Okay, well, there we go. Um, we're sharing the results with everybody. So hopefully you can see the results on the screen. Looks like the majority of you have not had a chance to use CK12 with your students yet, which is great. You're, you're here because you want to learn more. You're wanting to start implementing. Um, as soon as possible or as early as the fall. Um, we do have some varied, varied uses with the Flexbooks and some videos, some of the resources. And then it looks like a majority of you are looking to supplement your curriculum, um, which is always a great option. Okay, well, thank you for participating in that. Um, we'll go close that out. And then um, Carl, I'm gonna let you get started with lessons and homework. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Those are really interesting results to that poll. Um, first off, just a special hello from everyone around the world. From the chat window, I saw we have people from the United States, but of, and then further shores of um, the UK, Myanmar, Romania, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Mauritius, and even four in the morning in the Philippines. So whatever time of day this is, we are so glad that you're with us here, especially at four in the morning from the Philippines. That's some dedication to learn some tools on how to help out your students. So the easiest way to get started to um, get going with CK12 is to use our Flexbook 2.0. And we pick one that matches your course and you start assigning lessons to get your students learning. All you need to do is go to ck12.org and scroll down to the what do you want to teach today. And from there, you're going to be linked directly to the table of contents for that Flexbook. Here, you'll see all the chapters for the Flexbook, and then you can click the little expanding arrow thing, and you can see the titles of all the lessons in that chapter. So in this example here, there's a chapter on cell biology, and then I can see there is a membrane proteins lesson that I can use. So to me, this is a great place if you're looking for content, go find the Flexbook 2.0 that matches what you're teaching. Then you can assign any of the lessons from the Flexbook 2.0 to your students. Many teachers start using CK12 as a supplement to their existing curriculum by creating assignments of CK12 lessons. It can serve as a great resource supporting different ways of the learning the content that they're teaching. So let's say you're learning or you're teaching linear equations and the distributive property, and maybe you're using Engage New York materials that the district gave you. You can assign that concept using the corresponding lesson on the CK12 platform. Then students can explore that concept using a variety of modalities and interactives to fill in the gaps using adaptive practice at the bottom of the lesson. You, the teacher, and also your students will get really good information on their performance on this concept. It's a win-win to use CK12 
even if you're using another curriculum. Once you assign the lesson, you will see, receive intelligent teacher insights showing how your students are doing. And remember, these lessons you assign can be also the core curriculum if you want, or just be used as supplemental. Our adaptive practice is a great thing to use as homework because um, it's a really good way to have your students learn and practice. It's better than a worksheet because it adapts to what exactly each one of your students needs and where their current level is, and then they progress with success. You can choose to assign this kind of weekly or even daily if you'd like, and then the students will understand the pace that you want them to learn. One of the things students love is they love the fact that they can easily complete the adaptive practice on their phone and they can do almost everything on the CK12 by going on their phone to the browser and typing in ck12.org. They don't have to download any special apps to learn with CK12. Finally, CK12 offers hints that help students get unstuck because they're not always with you. And obviously with all the school closures around the world, teachers are feeling even more distant from their students. So, you know, all the great tools that CK12 offers, like the hints in the adaptive practice, really help the students keep learning. And that's kind of what we've always been looking for is a little momentum to keep things moving along. We offer two different versions of um, kind of modality pages. One of them is our, our concept page on the left. And if you search on CK12 for any concept, you might end up on one of our concept pages, which presents all the different modalities, the different ways of learning that CK12 offers. And then the student or you can choose specific activities from that concept page with the idea that it doesn't matter how you learn the content but learn the content. So if you're in the mood to watch two videos and then maybe do an interactive, fine, learn about motion that way. Or maybe you wanna do the read, the lesson, and then watch some videos or use the study aids developed by students. So we offer a variety of modalities and they're all available on the concept page. In all of our Flexbook 2.0s, we offer a similar thing called a start page. And this is at the beginning of every lesson where maybe the student wants to go do a real world application prior to getting started or watch a video. And maybe for like second language learners, they might need to watch a video to kind of build some academic language that they'll be using in the lesson. And then they all click the start button and they get into the lesson. So it's a great way to offer additional content. We have something really exciting that we've put together for this summer. These are our brand new flexlets. And think of a flexlet as a smaller version of our course flexbooks. So our course flexbooks usually offer all the content that you'd need for a specific course, like let's say biology. And what the flexlet is, the flexlet is just a smaller version that the students can use when they're not in school, like let's say over the summer. And it really focuses on the key concepts. So we've chosen what's the most important thing from this course, and we've presented it in a really easy way for the students to help them review what they've learned this year, but also to preview some key concepts that are coming up in the next school year. And of course, like everything on CK12, as Lindsay just said, it's free and it can be used by students all around the world on any device that has a browser. Another great strategy that we can offer is our Plix Interactives. And these are wonderful tools that allow the student to get into and really kind of play around with what, what a specific concept is. Our founder, Niru, Imagine that a whiteboard was coming alive. And this was, this was something that she tasked our Plix team to do was to make so that students can go play and interact. And that's what it is. So whether you use this as a warm up or mid class activity, exit ticket or even homework, these are really great activities to get students thinking about a specific content. 
And the, the good news is obviously in, um, in times of school closures, these are something that students can use as an independent activity. And then off to the left, you're, the students are gonna experience a series of questions. And these questions are gonna help them figure out, did I learn what I was supposed to learn from this interactive? And the really cool thing is the last question is always an open discussion question. So if the train has started to climb an elevation of zero feet instead of 10 feet, how would the equation track the change? And this is, you know, we're getting our students to think differently and think more deeply. And so you might use this in a, in a time of school closure as a writing prompt where then maybe they'll fill out a Google, uh, like, uh, a Google form where they can share kind of their thoughts on this. Or maybe it's a, an activity if you're using CK12 classes, you might encourage them to discuss it in the Q&A portion of a CK12 class. So a lot of them also link to conversations we're having in the discussion forum on CK12. Another one of the things that people love from CK12 and that you can start using with your students tomorrow is our beautiful simulations. We offer a, a package where the students get to experience what a group of concepts is all about. They get to, they're introduced with a, um, with a question at first, and then they dig deeper, and then they get into a playground, a sandbox, let's say, where the students have sliders that they can move around and they can figure out how concepts work and how the, it's a simulation of real things in the real world. And once again, if you're not seeing your students and able to have in-person labs, for both physics and chemistry, and there, these are great ways for students to, to experience things, especially in times when we're not seeing our students every day. And we also hear from teachers of other subjects, a lot in mathematics, they use our simulations also, because there's some really great content there that applies to the concepts that they're teaching. Um, we've got a variety of community contributed ideas. So where else do you see this concept? And, and this is really good because it really helps the students understand and expand their, their learning. All right, up next, we have real world applications. And these are another great thing that you can start using with your students tomorrow, regardless of what curriculum you're using, because they answer the question, when am I ever gonna use this? And you know, I've had students ask me that throughout my career and CK12 has over 2000 of these real world applications that help the students understand about a concept and how it's found in the real world. So in this example here, it's about linear systems of equations um, solved by elimination. So engage the students with ideas and things from their life. These are a great way, way to start your class like as a warm up and they really help the students get into modeling and, and analyzing. And this is obviously as part of any state that's doing Common Core, those are both key things. And regardless of the system you're using, getting our students to model and analyze are something that we always strive to do. One of the most exciting things you can do on CK12 is to create a Flexbook 2.0 matching your scope and sequence. Start by choosing one of the existing Science or Math Flexbook 2.0, and then go in and change the order of the chapters and the lessons to exactly match the order that you teach them in. You can even add in additional chapters and lessons or remove the ones that you don't need. We've had many teachers make their own customized 2.0 Flexbook in just a couple of hours. And then you can continue to improve your Flexbook throughout the year. Meanwhile, along the way, each of your students will be experiencing our intelligent platform providing personalized learning. If you want to add or adjust resources for a particular lesson, you can start with the related content that has already been curated for our 2.0 Math and Science Flexbooks, and then quickly remove the ones you don't need or that don't apply to your students. So this is a great way to have additional resources easily available for student learning, which can be referenced by in assignments or simply be there if needed. 
And another thing I'll add is that I have teachers that have told me, you know, they, they find some videos on YouTube that are like explaining in another language, for example, in Spanish. And so they, they find those and they attach those under the related content because they have a large number of Spanish speakers. And sometimes it's better to have the students understand the, the content in their home language first and then get into the academic English language that's available on CK12. Another thing you can do is you can swap out any of our adaptive practices already attached to a lesson with a custom quiz. And this means like if you don't feel like the questions that we're asking maybe exactly apply to what you're doing, you can replace the adaptive practice with a specific set of questions pulling from the 150,000 questions that we make available on CK12, but you can also add in your own. And so if there's a specific style of questions that you need, you can go in and you can write the questions that, for example, your district, you know, there's some district assessments that ask a specific, you know, type of question, add those in so that your students while using CK12 are getting exactly the type of questions that they need. Um, enhancing lessons is another thing you can do by using interactives and inline questions. We already in many of our books have developed interactives. And so by starting with our new Flexbook 2.0, you will find the newest and best content available on our new learning platform, on the 2.0 platform. In addition, we have inline questions, which allow students to kind of check their understanding while learning the material during the lesson. You can also, take any lesson like this and you can add in your own video. You can add in, for example, if you have Google Slides presentations, you can just put those and they'll be part inside the lesson. Or you can even use embed codes to add in other interactives from other sources. Um, so there's a lot of great things you can do to enhance the lessons. One of the things that I think is really important is to customize and localize content that will be meaningful to your students. Here you can see a district in Tennessee did this by including a picture of Dustin Lynch who graduated from their district and then went on to perform at the Grand Old Opry. And they were able to engage their students with things that mean something because it's you know like a graduate of their district and the Grand Old Opry is part of the social studies curriculum in Tennessee. Consider getting students involved in this process too. Have them contribute images or artwork that they've made that relates to the content in the lesson that you, uh, you're using. Have them collect data on the local ecosystem and use that as the example data for future classes. Split up topics and have them make review videos that can be included in, in the Flexbook here to help students learn those topics and have them write their own inline questions and feedback for those questions that you can incorporate into your Flexbook. Remember that none of this has to be done overnight. The first strategy for using a Flexbook is match the scope and sequence. Any additional content and internet activity, student involvement can be done more in little pieces over the years as you continually tailor the curriculum and the resources for the next wave of students and requirements. One of the things that we are really proud to offer now is some really strong curriculum for Common Core um, for math. And we started from the ground up and really tried to think about the learning progressions that the authors of the Common Core were thinking about. And then we've included a standards browser here that specifically by standard of Common Core, you can go in and you can find content that supports the teaching of that, or in the case of the students, the learning of it. So go take a look at our standards browser and you access it through the explore menu on the home page. We also link into other flexbooks with the content. Um, and then finally, we have our NGSS and we offer a lot of content that many teachers are using for science standards, the new generation science standards, and also for teaching phenomena. So if you're logged in as a teacher, you can go once again to that explore menu and you can choose NGSS and for each standard, you're going to find out 
specific content. For example, you can create phenomena using wonderful content from CK12, like why do trips to Mars happen only during certain launch uh, periods? Why do diamonds sparkle? And then how does a touch capacitive screen work? So there's just so many things that you can use to kind of teach the NGSS way by using CK12 interactives, clicks, lessons. And a lot of teachers with, a, with um, NGS content that's out there have said, there's just not enough content. I need more content. And CK12 CK is the place that will get you that content. All right, so we would love you to start thinking about thinking out of the box with CK12's Flexbook and The Sims. As you think about where to start, consider using the CK12 platform. One science teacher who also coaches lacrosse used the Flexbook structure to create a resource book with drills and fundamentals, including text and videos to help his team learn and practice. So he made a Flexbook for his lacrosse team. And then he incorporated simulations that cover physics and chemistry and earth and space and physical science and then brought those in too. There were many important things that he could help his students use. So like the water fountain sim can be used in a pre-calculus class when uh, talking about parametric equations, or the at the crossroads sim can be the starting point to discuss trade. Even better, team up with a colleague across the discipline and create a lesson that spans both subject area and helps students see the relevance of one subject in another class. So this is when Carl tells you the importance of using Twitter as a resource. A lot of educators have been reluctant to kind of move into social media because we're so busy. But I'll tell you, this one's going to pay off. And you know, six months from now, you're going to say, thanks, Carl. I'm glad you pushed me to go do this. Go set up an account on, CK, uh, excuse me, on Twitter and start lurking. Just look around. There are so many great educators out there that are sharing a lot of super content. And especially as so many of us aren't going into, into our schools anymore, it's a great way to combat isolation when I'm not having those conversations in the math office with my other, uh, other teachers. So you can also hear from leading experts. So what I encourage you to do is set up an account and the first thing you're going to do, of course, is go follow at CK12 Foundation, where you're going to be able to see the latest information from CK12. For example, we've been talking a lot there now about our new summer flexlets that we've just recently introduced. And so it's a great place to stay kind of up and current on what's, what's happening out in the world. But there are many great teacher resources available. And I encourage you to take a look at these hashtags here, blended learning, personalized learning, OER, Go Open, 21st Century Skills, EdTech, Math, SciChat, STEM. You're going to immediately find tons of great content. And then you're going to kind of get to know certain experts that are constantly posting there that you decide, you know what, I want to find out more from this teacher because they're doing exactly what I do. And it's really good. So, all right. Um, Another thing that I suggest you do is flip your classroom. As we're all kind of struggling to find things to assign to our students to do as um, during the school closure times, there's a ton of great content here that you can use to flip your classroom so the students went on their own are doing things like watching videos and reading basic level things and going through interactives and they're doing things on their own. And our Plix and Sims are a great way to engage our students and finally, to have them start the adaptive practice maybe before you do your lesson getting to the meat of a concept might be a great way to prepare them. So flipping your classroom using modalities from CK12, you're gonna find a lot of great um, things come of that. Wow, so Lindsay, I think we have um, just talked a lot about <laughs> strategies that people can use and they're probably wiping their brow now going, wow, Carl shared so much already. But maybe there's some questions that we can talk about here. Yeah, no, everybody's doing a great job of keep your questions coming into the Q&A window. Our team's been answering a bunch via text. They've flagged a few for us to tackle. Um, Carl, I think everybody would benefit. A, a series of questions came in about CK12's core offerings. So for example, 
Paige asked, in the K through five math and the K five science, are there only textbooks or are there videos, adaptive practice, simulations, et cetera? Can you just go through our core offerings again with our users, please? Sure. And I'm going to take over the screen. I think I just did. And hopefully everybody can see my screen live now. And I've gone to ck12.org slash, um, uh, and actually this says student, but this is what the students see. And we can take this off. And because I'm a teacher, it's going to jump back and give me the teacher, but they're essentially the same. And the idea here is that you're going to click on what do you want to teach today? And we offer content in all of these different areas here. And so, you know, one of the ways, and I think kind of the preferred way, if I'm a biology teacher, I'm going to click over and click on biology. And what it's going to direct me to is the table of contents page that has all the great content of the topics and the units and the lessons that I need for teaching biology. So this is one way to access the content. So you can see here, these are the lessons in the unit about genetics. And let's go look at the lesson on human genome. And let's go in there. And this is a great lesson that our subject matter experts have written that um, really kind of gets into the concept of genomes. And of course, we've got our adaptive practice there. In addition, oh, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Some users were asking if, if we embed our interactives and simulations into the lesson and we yes. do, you're going to see sure. them in the lesson. And then I think you just clicked on it. Some people were asking, how do they get to that related content that you see on the start page? Yeah. So this over here, these little nine squares are called our toolbar. And by clicking on that, you're going to have a wealth of information here. And the stuff that I'm going to point out here is related content. You can see there's a variety of content. And this content has been curated specifically for this lesson in the course of biology. And this is always the best place to find content that directly applies to what your students have to learn. So you can see we're not just, you know, a PDF of text. We're talking, this is a intelligent learning platform that is really going to be able to help your students figure out concepts and fill in gaps. And then of course, having the practice right here, you can assign this practice to your students and they can get in there and explore and learn better. We had a couple of questions when you mentioned scope and sequence. So if you just want to go back out to your table of contents, um, what we meant by scope and sequence is that all of our books can be used as is or they're customizable. And so Carl could choose to customize this book and he would be taken into our editor and he would be able to rearrange the order he's teaching these different subjects. That's what we mean by scope and sequence of make it match of he's going to remove, I don't know what he just removed. He's going to remove some subjects. He's going to drag and drop some subjects, rearrange the order of this is, this is a great place to start if you're looking to get a book customized for your specific students. Yeah, and you can see here, I can delete whatever lessons I'm not teaching in my course. You know, and a, a lot of times we hear from teachers, well, I teach an integrated version. Well, it's really easy to pull in all the lessons you need from our various books in exactly the right order with exactly the concepts that you need. So, you know, CK12 is where that happens. The last thing I'm going to have you show before we kind of get back to the core content, um, can you take them to the webinars page? We had a lot of questions coming in about learning management systems. We do integrate with Google Classroom and we have integration with Canvas and Schoology. And one place if you want to learn more about that is on the webinars page, you can register for upcoming webinars, of course. And then as you scroll down, you can see some archived webinars. And we do have kind of full 30 minute sessions on Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology. So if you're wanting more information about that, we're not covering it a whole lot in this session, um, just because it's, it's, it's a lot of information on, on those integrations. But um, there's some easy resources, or of course, we have a help center that you could always use um, as well to look up some quick information um, or resources as you're working on CK12. Fantastic. What else can I help you with here? Someone says, can you show the CK12 cafe and how to use it? Sure. So let's go back to the beginning. And if y'all want to watch here, I think this is maybe the most important thing I'm going to share with you all day. And it's really how to access all the great resources on CK12. 
And the number one way is to come over here to the explore menu. And here you're going to find so many things that we've already been talking about. Flexbooks 2.0, our original Flexbooks. You can see schools pages, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but direct access to all of our Plix interactives. You can see a browse page of our simulations, direct access to, you know, adaptive practice. Here's where, where um, Lindsay was just talking about the webinars, and I mentioned the NGSS and the um, CCSS math um, standards pages. Even our brand new Flexbooks, you have access to them there. We have a concept map and, you know, you can see pictures of Lindsay and me on a meet to team thing. But everything you need is kind of, you. this is your starting point right here. So here we have the cafe and I will go in and answer your question. And this is our cafe and I really encourage you, especially many of you are educators right now, this is the forum where you're going to want to go hang out and have conversations. Most of these conversations will be with other users, other teachers using CK12. From time to time, I um, and others on our team here do answer some of the questions. If you have like support questions like this isn't working, please contact support. This is more an area to kind of get some ideas and share thoughts about things. But, and also you can encourage your students to share ideas and um, ask questions in the math corner and the science corner. And we have a special homeschool corner for our homeschool students. Great, um, I encourage you all to keep your questions coming in. I'm gonna take the screen back from Carl and we're gonna go into our next topic of discussion, which is differentiation, learning and literacy. Excellent. Um, so, we offer a lot of ways to improve learning by differentiating and you can create multiple classes kind of smaller subclasses and you can then offer differentiated assignments you can use our adaptive practice and inline questions and then other parts of our interactive support learning at all levels another thing that we um, offer is improved learning and literacy and you're gonna see in this next section, a lot of the tools that we offer to help your students learn and really understand the content. Um, and we have notes and other language things that we'll be talking about. So let's jump into part two here. So with differentiated classes, I encourage you to create a class and that, you know, by class, I mean like a subclass, like a group. And like, this is an example that I always use. I always have the purple group. And, you know, in the purple group, I know they are struggling readers. Whatever their issues are with reading, they might need more scaffolding on, on being able to process academic text. So I have my purple group that's there. And then I might have the green group that are great readers. And I might have some special activities that only they're going to do. And I can assign them on CK12. And the good news is, there's no stigma from doing work when you're working in front of the computer. So it's not like I've segregated physically the purple group and they're all sitting in the corner and everybody knows, oh, those are the people that struggle with reading. When it's done digitally, there's none of that happening. You're simply supporting your students. And of course, you can still make assignments that apply to the whole class. So it's a great differentiated classes is easy on CK12. So you can use our adaptive practices challenge and support because the best thing that the adaptive practice does is for each student, it figures out what level they're at, and then it builds from there. We know not all our students are at the same level, and it doesn't make any sense to give a student who's struggling a bunch of advanced questions before they have enough knowledge to be able to solve them. So what we do is we ask questions and are constantly creating a new learning pathway for each one of your students. And then along the way, we offer content to fill in the gaps. Then you can look at reports and you can see exactly what your students are doing, but also the students can see how they're doing and they can see where they are with this concept. And we want to encourage our students to become self-advocates and we want them to be in charge of their learning more than anybody else. And the data that they can get from doing adaptive practice will help them figure this out. And then finally, the adaptive practice, when you're using a Flexbook 2.0, it's a part of the lesson. If you assign the lesson, they get the adaptive practice also. One of the things that over the last year we've um, kind of developed is this brand new idea of inline questions, not waiting until the students finished with the lesson to give them questions, but including questions throughout the lesson. 
And then it gives them feedback. Like here in the example, it gives them a specific feedback based on the fact that they answered this way. I know that they didn't divide the price by the number of rolls to get the unit price of paper towels. And so specifically, I'm helping them get over this hurdle, our inline questions are. So these are questions that have a lot of feedback that instantly the student gets and that doesn't require the teacher to be standing right there helping them. And especially in times of learning when the students are not physically located in our class due to school closures, these are really good ways to make that happen. And then also, the other thing I suggest is have your advanced students create inline questions as part of their kind of reinforcing their knowledge. We have challenge and support questions with our simulations. Um, challenge students with questions by turning off graphs and teacher walkthrough, we have tutorial videos and links to the concept pages and more detailed icons. Helps you get started during these deeper thinking interactives and support learning. Electronic and PDF companion worksheets are also available to engage students with some scaffolding for the simulation. Also with our simulations, we encourage you to use the features where things can get translated. We've had volunteers from around the world translate our simulations because they've had such success with them, they want them in their local language. And so we've worked with them and now we offer simulations in a variety of languages. You can also customize slider-based questions or have your students come up with some that will really help the students understand, do I understand this simulation? And these simulations are a really good way to dispel misconceptions. So for example, there's a common misconception of particles of a solid have no motion, but use the CK-12 simulation called building bridges to help the students understand that. And you can see there's a great list here of common misconceptions and then the simulations you can use to, to help them understand. Our Plix interactives have great learning resources included in them. So we offer hints in the questions that come with the simulations. Once again, if you're not standing right there helping the student, to be able to offer some learning resources that the students have access to will help make the student become more successful. So um, our questions, as I said, for the Plix, there are a series of questions that come up. They're given feedback on how they're doing, and then they can learn more with the link to the concept page. So they aren't just forced to stay here. They can go find out more if they want to kind of add on to their knowledge or they're struggling with it and they're not quite getting it. Another thing we encourage is have the students explore the interactive and then create a discussion with others and use this as a discussion piece to get deeper thinking going with your students. All right, um, we next have a video and, and the teacher is going to explain how she uses the digital highlighting feature on CK12 to help her students process academic texts. A student has more than one learning model, learns through multiple modalities. Um, a feature that CK12 provides is the highlighting with different colors. So I'm able to not only emphasize a key point, but I'm able to assign it to a specific color that can also trigger um, another, maybe another memory for them. Thanks, Anna. So we've improved the highlighting and note taking in Flexbook 2.0 platform. It's now located on a column on the right hand side. So if you click into the toolbar, you'll have access to notes and highlights. And what this does is it summarizes everything that they've highlighted or annotated. So this is a great way to teach our students how to synthesize text. And then, you know, another technique is called talking to the text, meaning, you know, making the students in their own words describe what the text is describing. And then you use the summary panel as a great way to summer, to review the lesson. So I've heard, you know, I was in an Anna's class where she's telling the students, go look at all your notes and highlights in that special panel before you take the quiz today. And that's how she used it. 
All right, one of the most incredible things that we can offer now in the digital age is foreign language support. At the bottom of the lessons on CK12, you're gonna see a Google Translate option where you select language. And when you click select language, all of the Google Translate languages become available. And this to me is when I, you know, when I have second language learners, whether they're students or their parents, this is when the jaw drops, like it's all available in Spanish instantly or in Chichewa instantly. And I've seen it where the students will bring up their home language on their phone of the lesson. And then on their Chromebook, they'll have access to the English you know, academic language version. And using the two, they start building language by reading it, for example, in Spanish, and then seeing what the English section has to say in the very same part. And this is powerful because often I've been in classrooms where recent arrivals who don't have any academic language in English sit there and they do nothing for weeks. I was, um, I, I was there in, um, in Richmond, California the other day, and it was amazing when a teacher showed a student who was coming to the class for the first day that they could see the lesson that they were working on in Spanish. And it, it was a pretty amazing moment. Another way to involve your parents is to send them the links to Flexbooks, like that you're the topics that you're going to be covering. This could be the concept pages, or it could be specific lay, uh, lessons in the Flexbook that you're using for your course. And then when you're explaining, like on back to school night, show all of them how to translate instantly into their home language. And I, I guarantee you're going to see parents become excited about being part of the system because often if people don't speak English, they feel really disconnected from their students' school life. And this is a great way that you can reconnect those teachers, those, those parents rather, to get them involved. Um, next, we spoke to Cynthia Ontiveros, the principal at an El Paso independent school district about the power of this CK-12 Translate feature. I met a parent who was struggling with um, supporting his daughter um, because he did not speak English very well. So I, sh I brought up the CK-12 on my iPad. I quickly showed him how he can change the language and he was nearly in tears and he felt just so excited that now that he could help his daughter, which was emotional for me too, knowing that this is what CK-12 is about. This is what we want our parents, our language learners, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak, they need to find a place in our classroom and CK-12 helps us to do that. Excellent, thank you, Cynthia. I do love the conversation. I just spent a moment while the video played looking at the chat window and there was a whole like, what time is it where you are conversation happening with our people around the world. And I love that. All right, Lindsay, more questions. Uh, let's, let's take a few here. One is, what do you recommend to differentiate reading levels? I've chosen middle school CK-12 resources for my high school students, but is this the best way to adjust the reading level for different students? Yes, and I'm once again going to steal the screen back. I think you're seeing my thing. Yeah, let's start here. And the, the, person, the, the question is being asked here, you know, it's often the high school science teachers have difficulty with reading level with their students who maybe are a year or two or three or four behind. And so, yes, correctly, you should be going into our earth life and physical science here to maybe bring down the lesson. So I know, for example, physics has a lesson on motion but also physical science does too. And so you might wanna take a look at the physical science. And I'm gonna give you an example here. Use our toolbar, our search bar rather, and I'm gonna type in motion and I'm gonna search, and it gives me the option of searching in physics or in physical science. And then that will take you directly to the Flexbook 2.0, but I also can search on all of CK12. And so, and I can filter this here only by concepts. So let's go check out concepts. And indeed, here is a concept for physics here. And here you're gonna find a variety of content that maybe is a good way to scaffold content for people. Like you might wanna pull some videos, there's nine videos here, and maybe one of them would be appropriate for a struggling reader to maybe give them enough 
context so that they can understand and understand what the, um, the text is talking about. And other questions? Sorry, 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 trying to unmute myself there. <laughs> um, yes, we, we have a question um, that came in a couple times about students turning in work. And I know we're not doing a deep dive into classes and assignments, but um, somebody was asking basically how, how do they get students to turn in their work? What are, um, the, what are the tricks on our site if they're having trouble turning something in? Okay, so this is like in, in conjunction with the, just like having them click it or kind of philosophically getting them engaged on CK. <laughs> I think probably more of the, the technical aspect. If you just want to give them a brief glimpse into like if you assigned a Flexbook 2.0 lesson, what a student would have to do in order to generate a report for the teacher. Sure, sure. So the key thing is, and I'm logged in unfortunately as a teacher here, but I can show you this here. We're going to go into, uh, let's go to grade six math. I love that book. It's one of our newest books. And um, if we're in here, what, when you are working in the lesson and you want to, you want to assign this lesson to your students, you're going to click here and you're going to assign it to either a CK12 class or the Google platform thing. But down here, when the student has been assigned this, you're going to find that they have the option here to start practice. So they're going to click a start here. And after they do the practice, they're going, to they're going to close this and then there'll be a button up here called turn it in. And what I encourage you, if you'd like to see more examples of this, go to our webinar about this. And we have a, lo a lot of great content on this. So I'm going to go here to the webinars and you'll see there's one that's exactly about what this is. And if you need to see this, kind of working. And it'll be here in this one here, the CK12 2.0 platform. And I believe there's a, yeah, right here, there's an archive version of that one. And you'll see it in action to what, what that you're asking about. Well, Carl, let me go, go ahead and go back to the keynote because I think you might touch on a few of these things in your last section here that's on assessment, progress, and remediation. I think that may address a few of the questions that we have in the queue right now. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to talk about is learning versus assessment. And then we're going to go move on to uh, kind of tracking their progress and offering remediation. So let's get right into this here. With assessment, progress, and a remediation, CK12 has many resources with learning in mind. So for example, our simulations, inline questions, and Plix interactives are all melt, meant to help students learn. So we provide direct feedback and offer hints and other support. These modalities give a complete or an incomplete score when you assign them. If you wanna see how students are doing on questions, we recommend you use our adaptive practice because you get both a completion score and a skill level. And then quizzes, of course, allow you to see exactly which questions you asked and which ones they got right. Another thing we encourage you to use is CK12 for pre and post tests. This is a great way to test the knowledge of your students before you begin a new chapter of study. And then afterward, you can use the post test to see the progress. And it shows the growth. So if you haven't used CK12, this is a really good way to do it. Begin you know, on your next unit here and just see what they know. And that might also kind of guide what you choose to cover as part of your lessons. All right, um, next, we encourage you to use the quizzes function in our 2.0 um, Flexbooks here. If you want to incorporate a quiz into a lesson instead of practice, you can customize the existing practice or pull in a quiz that you've already made. And while this removes the adaptive practice that adapts automatically to your student's performance. It's one way that you can tailor your, your lessons with your own assignments. Alternatively, leave the practice in each lesson and then create a pre or post section in your Flexbook with key ideas, uh, ideas and then attach pre or post tests. One new feature that we've added is the students can finally pause a quiz. And this means that when they're working, they can click pause and resume it later. And this is a feature that many of you asked for, so we added it. And I hope it makes using quizzes on CK12 go more smoothly. Reports 
of not only show completion for learning modalities and scores, but they also give you access to the same reports that the students see for practice and quizzes. This includes the time that they spent, the level of questions, and even answers to the questions. You can use this to see what topics you need to cover in more in depth before moving on or to help students reflect what they understand and even the time that they spent completing their work. For lessons in the 2.0 Flexbooks, CK12 offers some really valuable insights. These include the time and where students spent time on the lesson, plus the practice skill level or the quiz percentage. The color-coded lesson are an easy way for students to show how they're doing on that topic. So remediation. For science lessons, we offer this really great feature called paragraph mapping. Students will see this automatically for CK12 lessons, and you can see that as you click through it with your students, it will match the insights. Anywhere you see a teal blinking dot, you can click to see a question related to that paragraph that the student missed. This too can help you plan your next lesson or work with specific students to review those topics. Okay, I think we're gonna do a last call for some questions coming into the Q&A. As we're approaching the hour mark, um, I wanna go over just a few wrap up pieces of information and then we will stay on and Carl will demo some additional things um, if you would like to stay on and um, continue to tackle some questions. But let's talk through what we have coming up in the way of webinars. Um, if you go to a ck12.org slash webinars, you'll see that we're doing a CK12 Flexlet webinar um, three times coming up here, uh, as soon as tomorrow and then two next week. And Flexlets are the latest, greatest way to keep students' brains active over the summer. And these are half hour webinars. They don't count for the Certified Educator Program, but if you're intrigued by what you saw today and wanna to do a deep dive into Flexlets, you can join us for one of these sessions. And then in July, after the kind of the 4th of July holiday, we are going to start back up with another series of these three webinars. So you attended Teaching Strategies today. You can register for CK12 Flexbook 2.0 platform that's happening on Tuesday, July 14th or you could take the customizing CK12 Flexbooks and Adaptive Practice on Tuesday, July 21st. We'll keep posting webinars as they become available. So again, for any of you who are wanting to learn more about the Certified Educator Program or become a Certified Educator, you can go to ck12.org slash certified, press register and learn more. We do love to get your feedback on our webinars. We read every comment that we receive. So if you have a couple of minutes and you can go to this tinyurl.com, I think one of my colleagues is gonna post it in the window here, tinyurl.com slash CK12 feedback 1920. That's a place where you can just let us know what went well, what we could do better, and um, that helps us keep improving. So as always, I mean, truly, thank you for joining us today. We know that you're busy. There's a lot of ways you could be spending your time. Um, some of you could be sleeping right now um, in all these different time zones. So um, thanks for taking the time to learn with us today and know that you are supported. If you, need, if you have some questions um, about CK12 as you're starting to work on it, jumpstart at ck12.org is a good email address to use for our team. Or you can also email support at ck12.org. Follow us on the socials at CK12 Foundation, and then feel free to use the hashtag CK12 Certified. So again, for if anybody needs to jump off, thank you. Go ahead and jump off. Um, otherwise, I'm going to kick it back to Carl, and we're going to start going through the Q&A. Sure. I've, um, while you've been wrapping things up, Lindsay, you're looking at the questions in the Q&A, but also, once again, in the chat window. And there's some question saying that there's somebody who has a computer science class and is wondering, can they make a flexbook from scratch? Absolutely. And this is one of the things that, you know, kind of is one of the visions of our founder. She wants to make sure that everybody's creating content and then sharing it with the world. So we'd love to have you start. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. That's going to be the first thing I do, even though you didn't even ask. But I want everyone to see this. I'm going to go to my library here. 
and I'm going to do create new and I'm going to go create a brand new Flexbook 2.0. And this is creating a blank one from scratch. So I'm going to put in here, um, let's say Mr. Haley's computer science, ba boom save it and I've already begun working on it. I can put in different, you know, I can put in different units and lessons and I can do it. But the really cool thing is then I can share this URL with anybody in the world or I can choose to publish it here and it will be searchable. Meaning if somebody comes to our site, they can look at my computer science book and, and then use that as their book and then make it even better. So please, you know, we encourage you and, and you know, and, and shout out to us, mention it on social media saying, hey, I just created this great computer science book and I'm sharing it with the world. So, all right, Lindsay, let's get back over to the Q&A window where um, I can see Vicki had some questions here of how should we be dealing with our students who have limited access to computers? I don't have enough for everyone in the class. Yet last year we read it together by my printing it. Is this the best practice? Yeah, and I know that a lot of districts and schools and countries are working really hard on this as we are experiencing this worldwide pandemic and our students aren't able to come to, to school all the time. We have have to make sure that all the students get educated and getting devices is something that is obviously becoming a priority as the first step and then getting them internet access so you know if you are stuck with limited access to computers yes you can create so here i am on my computer science book and i can create a pdf of my of some computer science book and then i can print that out and share with my class or you know take it to my district print shop so that is one way and you know that is the most basic way to go i think you know a lot of um families are are focused where maybe they might have one device for the whole family and obviously if you have two or three kids all needing to do assignments this has been a big challenge out there so that's the minimum thing you can do and then obviously from there you know once the student has devices there are other options for trying to view the content and storing it offline and then finally, at some point, hopefully most of our students will have access to the internet and devices. But yeah, good old fashioned printing it out is sometimes what we have to do. All right, um, someone asked here, how do you get to the pre and post test? Some of our books have them already and you'll find them in the teacher's editions um, that are attached. And let me just kind of, maybe we haven't seen a teacher's edition yet. So I'm gonna go to a grade seven uh, math book here. And you can see here, there's a teacher edition up in the description portion of the table of contents. And here you're gonna find really great information specifically for um, teachers about the lesson. And we're just gonna run right in and um, use this as an example where they've listed out the standards, in this case, Common Core standards. And then they have a little kind of pacing guide agenda for the day. And then they have specific things, notes to the teacher written in purple, but also along here, you'll also find other types of quizzes and review things that the students don't see that the teacher can choose to assign. So, you know, there's a lot of great content, including pre and post tests in some of our books. But when I mentioned it before, I was talking about you just quickly go in and choose some questions that are applicable to your course that you're teaching using the quiz function and then assign those to your students. That's the pretest I'm talking about. And then you give the same exact quiz at the end as the post test. All right, Lindsay, another question here. Yeah, there's one that our team flagged. Um, is the remediation feature geared towards a specific student on students on average in your class? Okay, I think I understand the question, but one of the things that I'm going to tell you is that by assigning our adaptive practice, this is where the remediation really happens. And with our adaptive practice here, students answer questions and then as they answer questions, they, excuse me, they experience that maybe they've, they have a gap there and that maybe they need some extra help. Well, the beauty here is that the, the, the CK-12 platform is gonna interrupt their learning and gonna have them do a specific lesson or video, and it will come in and help the student out when the student is struggling. So it's, imagine it's like in the moment intervention. And this is what most students need to get all the knowledge they need to learn that concept and be able to answer questions that are kind of at level. So remediation happens student by student and is decided by 
our platform based on the student performance. All right, Carl, do students need an email address to participate in CK-12 lessons? Um, they can, one of the many ways they can log in is using an email address. But for example, I'm going to show you in an incognito window here that you, as a, as a student, you can join and you just need to create a username and a password. Okay, so you can, you can sign it up to where simply there's no email, it's just username and password. And that makes it really easy. We have a question about subgroups. Um, you, I think you talked about it earlier, but this user says, I was a little lost on the adjust students in Google Classroom after you make the assignment answer. Sure, so one of the things that you can do is I can be on a, um, I can be in a book and I can assign it. And if you're familiar with Google Classroom, let's go to a lesson here. One of your options when you click assign, so I'm in a lesson now, and I can click assign here, in, oh, I'm not signed in, sorry. I'm in the incognito window. And, but one of the options is you can assign to Google Classroom. And then what this does is it goes and figures out which classes you wanna assign it to that are already set up in Google Classroom and creates the assignment. And once that assignment exists in, student, in Google Classroom, you have the option of selecting or deselecting students who will receive that assignment. So Google Classroom offers a specific way to differentiate. Okay, I think we're getting down to, yeah, somebody said they can't see what you're selecting in Google Classroom. Carl, I don't know if you were trying to share your Google Classroom screen. I was, and then I was on the right, so I will okay. do that right now. And... Okay, well, because we're still seeing your CK12 screen. Um, but again, Google Classroom, it's, it's an easy integration, but um, if you want more information on it, it's, it's more than this webinar is gonna handle. We, we refer you to our archived webinar section for more information on that. Where you're going to get started with all that though, Lindsay, is you're in a lesson on CK12 and you're going to choose assign to Google Classroom. And then it will make the connection. I'll log into my Google Classroom here and all of my classes from Google Classroom will be available for me to assign this lesson to. Okay, we had a clarification on that, um, the student remediation question earlier. It was specifically talking about that teal dot um, that yes. now I think is a green dot on the screen. Um, is that for one student or is that for the students on average in the class? It's for one student. So if you went into the report and you could see which, did, you know, like the question, the student missed this question. One of the exciting things, Lindsay, that we are working on right now for later in the year is we are going to be giving teachers class level feedback. So in general, here's a paragraph that the students don't understand, or here's a question that many of the students missed. We, um, we've heard a lot of teachers ask for this and our, our great development team has been working hard on this because we know these are the kind of insights, insights that will make you, know, you a better teacher and to really help your students. So that's coming, stay tuned. Okay, I'm guessing we're typing a response to this last question about where to start. Um, again, I would use that explore menu up at the top to find any of our resources and learn more about them. Um, I'm going to go ahead since our Q&A is empty and um, thank you all for joining us today. And if you need anything from us, again, support at ck12.org can help you get your questions answered. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, folks. Stay safe.